It all began at the ASEAN conference in Bali. Former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee had floated the idea. The idea to connect the ASEAN countries through a land route. It was a dream that came true in 2004. An 8,000 kilometer odyssey passed through all kinds of roads. From dust tracks, boulder roads, ferry crossings, driving across swollen river, to wonderful world-class highways. From sea level to high mountains, from small towns and villages to densely forested areas. The rally was a unique experience that opened a new road to peace and prosperity for the first time in 50 years. It connected the superhighways of the present to a thousand-year-old bridges of the past. It traversed through inaccessible areas, drove through a mountain tunnel of unique proportions, tested the driving skill and stamina of the passengers, and the endurance of the vehicles. It created opportunities for recreating special events that took place after 900 years. It used global positioning systems that could trace a car to the nearest feet. It had all the ingredients of an expedition right from recovery vehicles to digital satellite news gathering trucks and state-of-the-art hospitals on wheels. But besides everything, it was a rally to promote friendship, cooperation and understanding and to usher in healthy business and commerce between all the ASEAN countries. The route survey of the rally was done a few months before the rally with specialists from the Federation of Motorsports Clubs of India who handpicked what later came to be known as the Dirty Dozen. These 12 people created history by traversing through untraveled terrain. For the first time, they charted out everything from breakfast, lunch, tea and dinner stuff, overnight stays, ideal speeds, hospitals, military and police protection and of course, noted the availability of clean fuel. At some places, fuel had to be taken from jerry cans since clean fuel was a rare commodity in certain long stretches. Here, fuel sold on roadsides was far from the quality one expected to be used in modern vehicles. Let us take a look at the presentation made by the Dirty Dozen. Da 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 
Now that you've got a taste of what all to expect, let's take a look back in detail. The ceremonies of the ASEAN rally began in the afternoon of the 22nd of November 2004 in the presence of the Chief Minister of Assam and the Minister for External Affairs and the Chief Ministers of the Northeastern States. The function included sky diving, a rare spectacle for the locals. Army motorcycle daredevils thrilled the crowd. A pre-selected 11 lead cars representing the different countries were flagged off by the Indian Prime Minister Sri Manmohan Singh at 4 p.m. in the presence of External Affairs Minister Mr. Natwar Singh and Secretary General of ASEAN Mr. Ong Keng Young. It obviously had diplomats and ministers and all the top-notch celebrities from the motoring industry. Prominent amongst them, obviously, was Mr. Singhania, who had supplied many a car with JK tires. He must have been a very confident man since, at the end of the rally, after successfully passing through the most diverse terrains, the JKs did not record a single puncture. This was the ceremonial flag off. The celebration ended with a dinner hosted by the Chief Minister of Assam at the Brahmaputra Hotel. It really had all the flavors of the Northeast. <laughs> Early next morning, the 23rd of November, all the drivers and participants gathered at the starting venue well ahead of the flag off. They were after all undertaking one of the longest rallies the world had ever seen, writing history on the move, not just in the book of records, but etched on the minds of people of all the ASEAN nations. The rally moved in two convoys led by the radio call sign Charlie 1 and Charlie 2. The chairman of the rally, Rajot Mojundar, Charlie 1, was the first to be flagged off by the chief minister of Assam. Even in this foggy and cold morning, an unprecedented crowd swelled and converged on the roads. So wonderful was the welcome and so much spontaneous enthusiasm was showered that the rally could move inch by inch and cover the first 14 kilometers in three hours. Welcome arches and banners bedecked the routes. Flowers and food were thrown into the cars. Some rally participants complained of having blisters from just shaking hands with thousands. There were cultural programs and folk dancers offered a taste of the diverse Indian culture. To add to the glamour, well-decorated elephants saluted as the rally passed by. Perhaps the Northeast had never seen such a spontaneous unity and overflow of joy. The rally, sponsored by the Ministry of External Affairs, the CII, Tata Motors, Mahindras, JK Tires, Indian Oil, Indian Brand Equity Foundation, Indian Airlines and many others received overwhelming response and the variety of vehicles added much color to the local environment. 
It virtually became a holiday in the northeast. Lunch was at the Nimalgarh refinery. Here too, there was not only a widespread of food, but also garlands galore. Security was high and no one took chances. Two helicopters hovered above, making sure that the journey was safe for the participants from all the countries. From Assam, the rally crossed over to Nagaland. The drive through the natural beauty of the Northeast was a source of great relief. This was only the beginning of the rally, and the rally was moving well behind schedule. Deb Shorkar, a rallyist from Kolkata whose left leg was amputated some years ago, was driving a Mitsubishi Lancer. He obviously was the star of the rally proving that grit and determination can achieve wonders. His co-driver was none other than his daughter, the youngest lady participant who accompanied her father at the age of 22. At Kohima, even after nightfall on a rather cold evening, little did the rally participants expect half a million people waiting to cheer them. By the time all the rallyists hit the bed, it must have been well past midnight. But they were all charged up and ready by 4 a.m. the next morning. The sun was just beyond the horizon. Packed breakfast had to be quickly collected and be flagged off by the Nagaland Chief Minister Nefio Rio. The rally moved on towards its next destination, Manipur. This area had seen some trouble before and safety precautions were at the highest. At Karong, the convoys stopped for tea and again local dancers converged to show their artistic skills. The abundant natural beauty of the area, the wonderful dances and the spirit of the atmosphere acted as a great pull and many a participant joined the folk group. A man who prominently watched the fun and frolic was the oldest gentleman of the rally, Mr. Ram Chandran from Bangalore. I don't feel 75. You're young at heart. Of course, that's way of life. He had not lost the vigour of his younger days. The next midday stop was crucial since a lot of paperwork had to be completed before the rally could move on to Myanmar. The Chief Minister of Manipur in Imphal had hosted a lovely lunch. And Manipur did not lag behind the other states in showing its traditional dance forms. The drivers were all charged up for the next leg, going across the border. Since the rally cars were warned of the non-availability of good quality fuel in Myanmar, the last fuel pump on the Indian side saw a long queue. Every car not only filled up its tanks to the brim, but also jerry cans were brought out, filled and refitted. At Moray, the India-Myanmar border, the rallyists had to get their paper stamped. They were, after all, on the verge of creating history by crossing overland onto Myanmar. 
The traditional martial arts displayed at the border during the short wait even shook the iron-willed rallyists. The sword fight.